Welcome to ETF Edge, your go-to place for everything exchange-traded funds. I'm Frank Collin, in today from Mr. Bob Bassani, taking a much-deserved break. And I'm also joined today by Todd Rosenblum, Senior Director of ETF and Mutual Fund Research at CFRA, Luke Oliver, Head of Index Investing for the Americas at the DWS Group, and Steve Grasso, Director of Institutional Sales at Stuart Frankel. So we begin with the markets. You can call it Merger Monday. Plenty of big deal buzz driving the tech space higher today between Oracle's bid for TikTok and NVIDIA's acquisition of SoftBank's arm. That's all powering the growth trade, at least for the moment. Last week, Bank of America came out with a note saying that value stocks are actually broken after their worst underperformance against growth stocks in a decade. But over the past month, we've seen stronger inflows into value ETFs with more than $1 billion worth of outflows from growth ETFs like the VUG, that's the Vanguard Growth ETF. So is the value trade actually broken? Steve, we're going to kick things off with you. What do you think? So if you look at history, and I think that's what people have started to look at when they're trying to decide on whether the, the value trap, as it's been called as of late, will continue and if tech will continue as the growth engine for the overall markets. If you look at it, Value obviously has struggled for a, a long time. You, you had a perfect storm of extreme uncertainty, deflation, and 30 years of, uh, of, of interest rates to, that continue to fall. People are starting to feel as if the deflation cycle is coming to an end and we'll start to see inflation uh, picking up, or at least with rates, they don't have to move aggressively higher. They just can't move lower. So I think the the two of the three drivers that we've seen for the underperformance of value are starting to uh, have cracks uh, in the armor. And, I, and if you start to look at where you're we'll, – we'll just look at the latest sell-off, Frank. We saw growth really take a hit extremely hard, and we've seen value actually move sideways to fractionally lower when you look at the chemical space, the material space, and the industrials. And I think that's a sign of things to come. Todd, I'm going to toss things over to you. Where does CFRA stand on the value versus growth ETF argument? And do rates play a factor in your decision as well? Yeah, so rates are going to play a role here. We at CFRA, when we look at ETFs, we take a holdings basis. What do we think of the underlying stocks inside the portfolio from a risk and reward perspective? And then we also take into account performance and cost. We like the growth ETFs, like you mentioned, VUG. That's Vanguard's or one of Vanguard's growth ETFs. We like IVW, which is iShares S&P 500 growth. We just think there's still more upside to be had, uh, especially as we're heading into a cyclically strong uh, fourth quarter for the year. But there is certainly a value trade. We've seen money, some of the money that went out of growth ETFs went into value in the past month, according to our first bridge ETF data flows, but not all of it. Some of that moved to the sidelines or investors went to be in more diversified. We still think growth has the next leg to go higher. So, gentlemen, if you'll allow me to play devil's advocate on both sides of this argument, I'm looking at the S&P sectors right now, and you also look at the NASDAQ. That's up about 17 percent over the last three months. But materials, those are up 20 percent. And then you look at industrials, those are up just about 15 percent. So are there actually any value stocks that are undervalued? And are there any is there actually more room for growth just to keep moving higher when you look at the numbers, even after the sell off? Well, financials is an area that's a heavyweight within the value slice of the of the ETF. So uh, you get an overweighting within uh, both financials and also utilities from there. And those two sectors have, have lagged behind. You mentioned industrials. If the economy continues to show potential signs of improvement, then industrials and materials are likely to do better. And you get some exposure to that with value ETFs. But it's really a play on, on uh, banks and particularly the financials in particular. Steve, what about you? Is that the way you see it as well? Well, so I, I agree, and I think we, we both will agree with a lot of uh, things in the overall market. And obviously, growth, there's no argument that growth has uh, been an outperformer. Uh, and, and just by the sheer magnitude of the percentage in the S&P, it kind of moves the ship you know, back and forth, and the, uh, everything else is the tail. But when you look at names like these chemical names or these paper and container board names, that's what is really interesting to me. We heard FedEx say that they hired 27% more seasonal workers than they did last year, just to satisfy whatever demand that they're going to see coming out of holiday shopping and shipping, where everyone is still 
uh, buying online versus in store with the uh, with the virus. So if that's the case, where are they going to put these what are they going to put these products in? They're going to put them into uh, the paper, uh, the paper stock. So I'm I'm long an individual name Westrock W O R K. But when you look at these chemical names, they've been so beaten up and trading at trough valuation. There's really not a lot of positive stuff that needs to happen to have these stocks move up 25 to 75 percent rather quickly. Todd, do you have any sectors that you think are especially sensitive to the idea that, number one, we have the holidays coming up with a boost in e-commerce, expected at least, and also the recovery? So we at CFRA take a barbell approach. We have overweight recommendations on information technology uh, and communication services on the growth side of the ledger and more of the defensive side with healthcare and consumer stable. So we do think investors need to balance the portfolio uh, the economy is likely to strengthen. We're likely to see room for growth. But those defensive stocks, when, when we get a pullback and ETFs uh, like XLV, which is the healthcare select sector spider, is a good way of being able to play in that both from a bit of a growth. You get exposure to biotech that's, again, doing well from M&A activities, uh, but also uh, more of a dividend yielding pharmaceutical companies.